This movie is the last in a series of five that demonstrate the basic use of FME Desktop as a tool for data translation and transformation. Each movie covers the content from one chapter of the FME Desktop tutorial. This chapter covers the basics of how to reproject data from one coordinate system to another. Reprojection is really just another form of data transformation, but it's one that's unique enough to deserve its own chapter. The examples included in this movie also show the basics of how to handle multiple source files by using a dynamic schema. The coordinate system, as you know, is a way of referencing data in relation to a known space. In most FME related cases, this space is the Earth itself. Often the term coordinate system is synonymous with the term map projection, but there's a lot more to it than that. Besides a projection, a coordinate system is also defined by a datum, for example WGS84, coordinate units, for example feet or meters, a particular spheroid and or ellipsoid, an origin point, optionally an offset or false origin, and also a scale factor. And FME incorporates all of these concepts into its coordinate system support. In FME, reprojection occurs at the end of a translation, whenever the coordinate system of the incoming data differs from the coordinate system requested for the output. Coordinate systems are selected through parameters in the Workbench Navigator window, as shown in this image. To demonstrate how to reproject data, I'll use the basic scenario that we have a set of files in MapInfo MIF format and wish to reproject them to a different coordinate system. The workspace I'll create will read and write the same format of data. In other words, it's solely a data transformation process and no translation of format will take place. This is a common scenario for many users of FME. As you can see, I already have FME Workbench open. I'll click the Generate Workspace option on the start screen in order to define a translation through the Generate Workspace dialog. I'm now starting to define my translation. I set the source format. Now, because there are multiple source files, I can select them all at once. Also notice how the reader and writer formats are both the same in this example. And now I set the format output location. In this example, I'll now ensure the workflow option is set to dynamic. I'll explain what the benefits of dynamic translations are later on. For now, I'll just click OK and create the workspace. Now the workspace has been created. If you look in the navigator window, you can see there was one reader and one writer defined for this translation. If I click on the expand icon next to the reader, I can see a list of parameters. One of these is coordinate system. I can double click on that coordinate system parameter to open an editing dialog. In this editing dialog, the source coordinate system can be defined. Here I set the source coordinate system to TX83CF, which I know is a coordinate system for my source data. As the name implies, it's a coordinate system for Texas, uses an AD83 datum, and also uses units of feet. Now I can repeat the process for the destination coordinate system. In this case, I wish to write the data as LL83, which is latitude and longitude in an AD83 datum. If you aren't sure which coordinate system to type, you can always open the gallery and select a coordinate system here. You can also locate the correct definition through a keyword search. Now this is set up, FME will reproject the data whenever I run the translation. So first of all, I will save the workspace. And now I'll run the workspace. Messages in the log file are particularly important during a reprojection. They record what coordinate system is being used and which grid shift files are being used in the translation. It's always worth looking through the log file after the translation to make sure this information is correct. As you can see, I've now created a set of output files. I have one output file for each input. The data in each file will have been reprojected from TX83CF to LATLONG83. 
Now I'll open a dataset to make sure the results are correct. In this case, I'm going to drag and drop a file into the FME Universal Viewer. If I query a feature in this data, then the information window reports that the coordinate system is now LL83. I can also see from the coordinate list that the data is now in a lat-long configuration. A previous example used an option called Dynamic Schema. It would actually have worked just as well with the Static Schema, but the Dynamic option has two major advantages. Firstly, the workspace is much tidier. The reader and writer both have only a single feature type, regardless of how many source layers exist. Secondly, the workspace can be reused for any source dataset. The writer feature type has no attributes defined, because it will dynamically create them from any input data, and can therefore use any source data of the right format. Dynamic schemas are very powerful and make possible a huge number of different data interoperability scenarios, one of which I'll now demonstrate. In this case, I wish to reproject a simple data set. Because I use a dynamic option, I'm able to do this using the same workspace. To reproject the new data set, all I need to do is find the source parameter in the navigator window, which is here, and double click it. I can now use the browse button to select a new file, the one that I now wish to translate. This file will be of the same format as previous. Finally, I click OK, save the translation, and run it again. Now I can inspect the output. This proves that the translation and transformation worked. This is very significant because I was able to do this using a workspace that was initially set up for another dataset. With a static schema I could not have done this so easily. As mentioned, dynamic schemas have very many uses. They are easy to implement when the workspace is intended for format translation only, or transformation of spatial content such as reprojection, like I just proved, or maybe clipping. Novice FME users are advised to use static workspaces when carrying out structural transformations, as data restructuring techniques are different in a dynamic mode. Remember, if you do need any technical assistance while using FME, the best starting point is fmepedia.safe.com. From here you can navigate to downloads, examples and documentation, plus also get in touch with the Safe Software support team. That concludes this movie on coordinate system reprojection with FME, and also the whole series of movies that cover the FME desktop tutorial. The next step on the FME training pathway is to focus on a particular path, such as raster data or spatial databases, and to take the tutorial for that. Alternatively, you may wish to attend a full FME desktop training course, either in person or online. Further details of FME training courses can be found on the Safe Software website at www.safe.com slash training. On behalf of everyone at Safe Software, thank you for taking the time to view this FME desktop training presentation. We hope it was time well spent for you. If you have further questions, please do not hesitate to contact Safe Software at any of the addresses listed, or look for further technical information at fmepedia.safe.com. Thank you.